you know, I just finished uh, remodeling my kitchen and my bathroom. Mm -hmm. And if I ever think or anticipate selling my house, should I put money into um, uh, working on the outside, the landscape um, for curb appeal? I think your house has, I know your house, and I think it has fabulous curb appeal. So I wouldn't worry about that. And what you did, you really put your money into the best places because um, when we look at what, where people get the most return for, for improvements, it's always the bathroom and always the kitchen. And you can't yes. anticipate getting 75 to 80% back of the money that you spent on it. And he's nodding his head, he's, he's agreeing um, on that. So those were really the places to be, putting, to be putting your money. People like that, even though you, know, you think, oh, you have good windows, good you know, new HVAC, but where you really get your money back is on the is on the rooms that you spent so is I mean, the kitchen so, so thinking ahead if i do want to sell my house a lot of people said take down your personal pictures and really have it staged i've heard pros and cons on that do you have personal pictures um for staging to make it feel a little bit inviting? i'll give you my opinion and then we'll give and then andy can too i think one or two are fine because honestly when i go in a house i kind of love looking at you know the family um, but if you have a, you know, a, a million pictures on your refrigerator or something like that, what people like to look at are, are the more, um, you know, the formal pictures that you have. Um, you have some sweet pictures up of your family, I would definitely leave up. It's only if you have like, you know, 5,500 pictures of the grandkids, sorry. Right. <laughs> it's, not, it's not lined all the way down the hallway is what right, you're Right, exactly. But one or two, I think, provide a personal touch. Um, and actually give some connection between between people. Andy, what do you think? I would, for the most part, I would agree with what you said. Um, you like a lot of people, especially up like stairways. I don't know if you have a two story or one, but a lot of people put pictures almost cascading up the stairways of like all their family members. I don't think that's good. Like Lisa said, a few is good, but too many, it feels like your house and not a house that they could picture themselves in. That's the reason people say that is, the less personal things you have, the more somebody else can mm -hmm. see it as their potential home. Oh, sure, think, and that totally makes sense. Yeah, well, think of how you feel when you, if you've ever gone to a new home development and walked into the staged homes there. You know, they, they just give you this, oh my God, I love this, you know, I could live right. here, even though you're not really gonna have the stuff that they have in, but there is that sense, whereas if you go in somebody's personal home, um, their personal style may not match match um, right. buyers, so it is good to to neutralize it as as much as possible. And you know, like I said, I've been in your house, and and I think that you have great. Um, it's already. I mean, I would love to see yeah. your house stage the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, and for both of you, and again, Lisa's in my home too. But I, my house was built in nineteen seventy two. So in the master uh, bedroom, there is a very tiny bathroom. In fact, you know, you can't put your elbow here to here without opening the shower door. And then there's not that big of a closet. So uh, when Dan was alive, um, I, we had, you know, we had uh, had a floor plan that would allow kind of an open closet and more of a modernized bathroom. Well, when he was alive, it would be about 18,000. Now I'm assuming you know, it'd be a big dump because he would do all the put down the labor. Is that worth it if, I don't know when I'll sell my home, but it'll be, you know, probably less than 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's a lot, and, and, and it, is kind, it is hard to modernize because the tastes now are for the big closets and the big master baths. Um, but if you, um, what I would do is consider, look, have, have somebody help you with this. Look at what other houses are selling in your neighborhood, um, how well they're selling, if they've redone those things or not. So, you know, when there's an open house in your neighborhood, back when we can have open houses again, go to all of them and look at what they've done um, because that's gonna give you an idea of, because it's, it's not just purchase price, it's also, um, how long it sits on the market, and whether you're gonna to have to be lowering your price to make up for that deficit of having, you know, not really a lot of closet space and not a, and not a modern um, 
bathroom. And if you can see that that houses are selling for about you know ten to twelve thousand dollars more than yours would um, on an eighteen thousand dollar investment, uh, it, it and then you want to do it sooner rather than later so you can enjoy it and you can get some of the benefits right. of the investment. Yeah. Um, that that should be what you're kind of thinking of. So what I would do, Nancy, is over the next year, I'd probably be looking at that. Um, yeah. And, and then make, you know, kind of making a decision based on that. And, and, um, and, and I know you have help, will have help with that too. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that's, that's what I would be doing because like I said, it's not just, and if the houses are selling for, um, for whatever that 80%, 75 to 80% difference would be of, of what you would spend, then that tells you something because if you're going to be on the market for six months, you get to add in all those mortgage payments too. Yeah. That yeah. you wouldn't have had to make. And uh, Andy? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, be honest, I, I couldn't hear the question that well. Oh, so, she, it, Nancy has, um, it, yeah, your, your volume is pretty low, Nancy. Um, well, Nancy has a house that um, the master has a very small closet and a really small master bath, like she was saying, if you stand like this, you can touch it with your elbows. And okay. she had gotten a, a, an estimate of $18,000, but I think that was with labor from, um, labor from her husband who, who um, has since passed away. Am, am I right about that, Nancy? Yeah, he passed away. Yeah, no, that it was about $18,000 with his labor. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what she's wondering is if it's worthwhile to do it. And, and then you heard what I said about yeah. trying to figure that out. So that would be to yeah. enlarge, she's talking, I don't want to enjoy yeah. it. That would be to enlarge the master closet and bathroom? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're, put, you're putting your money in the right place, like Lisa said, but going to the open houses, like Lisa said, is, is a great idea. It gives you an idea of what's going on in the, in the area. But um, yeah, that, I mean, that's a good place. Like we were talking about before, that's a good place to get your money back too. So. But only if you were to do it, you know, sooner rather than yeah, later, you, I think. Because no, I, I tell mean, people, I tell people this quite a bit. People ask me about redoing bathrooms or kitchens or, or anything if it's not something that's going to get worn out like a carpet or something, I always say do it sooner so you can enjoy it. I, I mean, agree. Part of, part of living in your house is you want to enjoy it. So you said you're not looking to move for several years. I think you said it. So, so you know what, do it sooner and get reap the benefit and then you'll still reap the benefit when you sell. You know, because we're so, can you hear me, Andy? I can, it's just a little low. Okay. Okay, I've got it as long as it'll go. Um, the, the thing is, and limited on space, it's a nine by nine. And I can't, I can't move the walls out. Mm. And so that is a very, you know, and to try to get an open closet and a workable bathroom, um, we do have a plan. Uh, but again, it's not, you're not going to be able to increase the square Yeah. I at least I just didn't hear it. Uh, she says hard she to hear has it a plan, with. but it's but it's, but the space is so awkward that it's hard to um, it, it's hard it's hard to deal just hard to deal with. What I was saying was Lisa thinks I'm hard of hearing to begin with, so this just proves her point. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Oh, thank you. That you know you've been very helpful. It is good. It's fun when Lisa has sent the um, Zoom. You know, I really do have that question, and it is a real estate question. So I think Jill's is the same thing. I really appreciate the input. Thank you. No problem. Good. Oh, it's fun. It's fun to. It's it's. We've been having fun doing it. Um, and I don't know. We just got a uh, an uh, order here from the governor that we can no longer hold open houses, even though most people have um, have um, stopped holding them, and. So we've been gearing up to, um, to do the virtual open houses. Uh, obviously if a house is vacant, anybody can, you know, can, can go in it, but we've been you know, shooting some video and we've posted some of that. Um, so it's possible you know, to, I mean, if depending on when you're ready to sell, even in this kind of environment, it's possible, it's possible to do it. And we're coming, you know, it's fun to come up with these different ideas of 
how to um, interact. And, you know, we can do showings via, via Zoom like this. We can walk people through houses and uh, we get to, um, we get to, uh, you know, meet with people this way. And uh, it's been, it's kind of, it's been exciting. We've been having you know, a lot of fun. An interesting uh, uh, email came out, um, Lisa, I don't know if you saw it, it was just before we started this today, mm -hmm. from the um, association with Tom Blanchard, the current president, mm -hmm. and he did a video about sales, and our sales price, median sales price for uh, March was uh, 319 mm. which is, which so is actually pretty good. Yeah. Price is held, and that's with half of that month really being kind of on lockdown. Right. Wow. Um, yeah. That shows you we would have had a really good month. That's you probably that's would have gone up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, so homes are still selling at a good rate. It seems to me, and this is more of a personal opinion. Um, I, I've been looking at stats every day, and it seems to me that we are getting a little bit less listings on the market. Mm -hmm. So that has slowed down a little bit. And you know what? Some of that could be people don't want to put their house on right now, especially if they're living in it, which I understand. Right. Um yeah. but but sales are still happening. Where homes are still selling, so and buyers are still out there, and they're really motivated by 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 interest rates. And I actually, there are some people who've had um, I've been in contact with a couple of past cl uh, clients, and and they have had rental houses that have vacate, vacated, and they're thinking rather than try to re rent them, that they're going to sell them. Um, oh, at sure. this point, because they know that prices are still good, and we don't know what prices are going to be a couple of months from now. We can project, and what we're, we project is that inventory isn't going to change. We're not going to see more houses on the market. It's still going to be be a tight, uh, tight inventory, and that means it's a seller's market because prices won't go down as long as there's demand, and we're still seeing demand because of because of interest rates. So, but if you're, if, for people who are concerned about that, um, it is, you know, they are, they, they are really considering selling. So anything that's vacant is really easy to sell. Um, yes. And anything that's occupied, Andy's been showing some occupied houses and, and uh, that's, you know, being handled uh, carefully. It's a real pain in the butt to put your house on the market right now if you're living in it because you're trying to be as careful as you can. Right. So, you know, it, it, there's there's two ways to do it, basically. You could just do the virtual showings, which that is fine. That's easy. But if you want to do regular type showings where people are going through the house, there's a lot of precautions you got to take. You know, people are having booties out, um, hand sanitizer. The best case scenario, like I told Lisa, I went in one where they left everything open. I'm talking even the front door was open. They, they weren't home either. They left right before we got there. And they left every cabinet open, every door outside to the backyard. Um, and they put hand sanitizer in a couple of places. So people are, you know, it, it, there's a lot more other things to it. I mean, as a realtor, we can help. But there's a lot of work that goes into doing it that way. Yeah, because so I think that virtual, you know, it's a good starting point to um, see a house that you want to buy. But there's something about walking in a home that connects you to that home. So I hope people need to feel that connection, you know. Yeah. And uh, one of the ways that that's being handled, if people don't want lots of people just coming in and looking, is you make an offer on a house subject to, to interior inspection. And then once you've got you've agreed to the other terms, then they can come and look at can come and look at the house. And what that really does is instead of having, you know, four or five parties coming through your home over the course of a period of time, you've just got one at a time, um, right. which makes it real. And that's what we've been hearing, limit our contacts. Right. So, because, well, I think that's going to be just limited just because of what's going on with the virus, too. Well, and it wouldn't be surprising, uh, actually, if, if some of this stuff actually continues because yeah yeah where where you will see that particularly for people who don't want a lot of people going going through their yes. house and you know i just thought of this you know how the iBuyers, zillow and um and open door have been 
working with people who don't want, I had some clients who didn't want people going through their house at all. They wouldn't let me sell it on the MLS. I got to help them buy a house. They didn't mind going to other people's houses, but they didn't wow. want anything going in theirs. And they wound up selling to, um, I think it was Open Door, um, and taking a little bit of a hit, but they, you know, the husband just didn't want anybody, anybody going through. And actually what we're doing right now is a really a good combat to that kind of situation where we say, look, you have to make an offer on the house before you can come into it and get accepted. Right. And I can see where that is going to be really helpful for, um, for us in the future. For sure. Who are reluctant. Yeah. 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 So it's, yeah, it's, it's an, it's interesting how, how um, business can change so quickly. And I, and I think that most of those changes are going to stay, a lot of those are going to stay in place.